All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 256 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Joining me, Jennifer Seymour. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Greg Cannon's in the house. What's going on? Hey, everyone. By the way, Greg just started an athlete's professional shooter kind of page thing. <laughs> and he has 11 likes. So I just want you guys, <laughs> if you guys do anything <laughs> for today's show, go over to, you can put like Cannon TSM in a ser Facebook search and you can find his page and give it a like try to get them to 100 likes yes made me popular yeah we got the the guest stars of the hour the folks over at trigger tech mark and T taylor what's going on guys thanks for this having us dude has a last name of bacon i mean <laughs> awesome that's probably an awesome dude to sit at the bar with after a few particularly in canada <laughs> yeah hey guys uh, this is mark here from trigger tech as well Yes. How you doing, Mark? It's good. It's good to have you on here. I honestly don't know much about Trigger Tech. I mean, I've heard of your name. Obviously, you're doing a lot of uh, you supporting a lot of PRS and those type type of games. The AR, you guys are into AR15 triggers and all that thing. We're gonna get into details on your triggers heavily, hopefully, in the show to get people brought up on this on Trigger Tech who are not familiar. Gonna get into uh, show sponsors here. The folks over at Tactical Shit. Uh, shop.tacticalshit.com for all your tactical shit needs. Okay, they got AR parts over there. Not sure if they have uh, trigger track triggers, but they got a bunch of stuff over there. Clothing, um, beard oil, they got it all. Stay tuned for a discount code later on in the show. All right, the folks over at GSL Technology Suppressors. If you're in the market for a new suppressor or can to put on your long gun, check out the folks over at gsltechnologies.com. Okay. If you guys are watching live YouTube, top right-hand corner, you can join the conversation. If you have any questions you want to get in live throughout the show, we'll get them over to Mark uh, or Mr. Bacon <laughs> um, throughout the show, okay? Also, Facebook, uh, the Shoes Mindset on Facebook, top more most recent pinned post. If you prefer, prefer to use Facebook, you can plug in your comment in there. We'll get that question or comment out live throughout the show. I think we have a giveaway coming. Uh, so if you guys are watching and you guys are kind of like one of those dudes that kind of like leave in the middle of the show, you want to stay tuned for a giveaway, an opportunity for a discount on trigger tech triggers and they're giving away one. All right. So stay tuned for the details on that. Lastly, the shooters mindset.com. You can check out everything. The shooters mindset show related. You can check it out live shop sponsors, all that stuff over at the shooters mindset.com. All right. All right, for those who are unfamiliar with you guys, tell us how you got into shooting, how you got into the gun industry, and tell us a little bit more about uh, Trigger Tech. Mark, we'll start off with you if you got it. Sure. Um, so, yeah, just uh, been mostly a hunter and, uh, um, I guess, an enthusiast shooter uh, for the past little while. So I uh, started working in um, uh, advertising for a bit, and then I uh, started doing some armed security and stuff like that too, and then uh, got into e-commerce uh, and sales as well. Um, then trigger check kind of popped up on my radar and, uh, kind of seemed like a perfect fit for me and, uh, been there for the last, uh, almost two years now. So, um, there you go. Taylor, what you got, man? Uh, yeah. So I've been a very enthusiastic gun owner since I could hold the gun. Um, it's always been a, a big passion of mine. Um, I've been involved with trigger tech, uh, from very early on, followed them along for a long time and, and joined on kind of at the first opportunity I had. I'm an operations manager there and I've been there for just coming on three years now. Um, and it's a, a fantastic place to be. Uh, Trigger Tech itself as a company, fairly new on the scene. It is. Yeah. Trigger Tech's been around since 2013. Um, we actually got started out uh, with crossbow triggers. Um, we, we patented a different way to release a trigger. So we don't use any sliding friction in our triggers. We use a free floating roller bearing that sits in between two surfaces. So basically all other triggers function on a sear engagement where you're, you're putting force on two surfaces until they slide and break. Um, you can improve that with coatings, uh, different kind of scaffolding that people will do, but we fundamentally redesigned the way that a trigger breaks. Um, and we did that because a crossbow needs to hold back 280 pounds of force um, when it's holding back in a recurve crossbow. So from there, we kind of uh, figured out our technology, got into it a little bit, um, worked on it kind of in a quiet Canadian way for a bunch of years, and then uh, made the splash into the REM 700. And it's, it's been um, just absolute bananas since then with the REM 700s and the AR-15s. So it's a technology that is very well suited to all different kinds of firearms, and um, it's, it's been quite a ride. 
So under you, uh, Greg, you actually own one of these, right? Right now, currently. Yes, I own one, and I'm very jealous of another one. Um, so <laughs> I got one. I actually the, probably the thing that got me hooked on this whole long range shooting thing um, was Miss Seymour and her uh, fancy bolt rifle, and just touching that trigger. Her her gun came with a trigger tech special in it, and the first time I pulled that trigger, I had a grin from ear to ear. I was like, this is retarded. Um, you know, cause I've been doing all sorts of three gun USPSA stuff like that. But as far as bolt guns went, I had a 30 out six, um, like a 20 year old Remington 700 and it was something totally different. Um, so I knew for sure that like that trigger was what was going in, in my gun when I built it. So it's over. He also had a very horrible trigger in a Remington 700 stock gun that he bought that was awful. Yeah, that was worse than the Glock trigger. But yes, I have my my, my trigger tech over Enjoy here. It. I love yeah. it. And I have another one sitting over here. Um, I was sitting at my computer doing some Black Friday shopping. And by the way, trigger tech has awesome Black Friday sales. Or was it Cyber Monday? One of the two. I'm sitting there and it pops up like 50% off a trigger tech trigger. I was like, well, that's what my brother's getting for, for Christmas. Um, so I actually got that one over here in his little, uh, steel, steel shooting oh, beauty. 22 over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna need to buy one of those for one of the ARs cause that's, that thing's awesome. Awesome. Well, we got a, a new AR one coming out in a, about a week and a half, um, as well. So, um, we'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say you can't just stop there. We got to get more at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, no, well, just, just looking at the uh, the schedule here, it doesn't come to later in the show, so we'll do a little teaser there. And oh, that's we'll, right. A little bit. Oh. <laughs> it could April, be one of those. Yeah, it could be, first, you what, you could be one of those guests. You could be one of those guests that just talk the entire show, and then they just hit all the questions, so we don't really need to ask them anymore in any type of yeah. order. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, don't ruin my show notes now. I worked hard yeah. on those last night. <laughs> yeah. I have the whole show rehearsed already. You guys don't need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did Trigger Check uh, get started, and when was the first Trigger made? Um, so, yeah. Oh, you go? Ahead, go, ahead, no, go ahead, Mark. You got it, man. Well, you, you're, you're probably there for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let you go. <laughs> sure. So our, our first triggers uh, were, were the, the crossbow triggers, and that was in 2013. Um, in 2015, we started getting into the REM 700 triggers, um, applying our technology to that platform. Uh, we started working with a company called Prairie Gunworks. They make uh, uh, sniper rifle systems for militaries all over the world, and that drove us into that. From then on, uh, we, we made at that point only a trigger that came down to a pound and a half, so it was an adjustable from a pound and a half to four pounds. So a lot of hunting applications, uh, stuff like that, but didn't really break into the PRS world at that point. Um, in 2016, uh, around November, we came out with a special trigger, so we were able to get it down to one pound. And um, then in October of 2017, we released the Diamond, uh, which is our four ounce to two pound adjustable. And that just blew us into the, the PRS scene and kind of uh, over the past year and a half, we've We've got a quite a market share in there using that trigger. So um, all of those triggers are based on our technology, which is the free floating roller bearing. Um, they all have zero creep and they're all impervious to uh, contamination. So um, that's kind of the rundown of how we've been doing it. And uh, yeah. Uh, the impervious to contamination thing. Um, that's the mark. I'm 99% sure it was you that I called. Um, mm -hmm. Do you remember sometime last year, some guy called you and he's like, hi, uh, my friend um, <laughs> dumped her rifle in a giant mud puddle and then <laughs> washed it off with a hose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that actually kind of sounds familiar, to be honest with you. <laughs> that was me. Um, and in my hands was the rifle behind Jen's head. Um, <laughs> she sent me a picture. And, I mean, the gun was in the mud. Yeah. And I thought he was going to cry, and he's like, bring your rifle to me as soon as you get home. And I'm like, what? And he's like, bring your rifle to me as soon as you get home. I mean, no, we, we, I cleaned we, the chassis with the pressure washer. Yeah. That's, <laughs> LRSC work, was awful. It was horrible, y'all. And it was like caked up with mud. So what was I going to do? Leave it on there? So when I got back to Rock Castle... I, and I wasn't the only one. There were like a, a line of us that were like hosing our rifles off because it was that bad. 
But the, oh, the best part is, I was, you know, I was like, what, you know, what do I do with this trigger? You know, because I took the trigger part and I was like, I'm going to have to take this thing apart. It, I'm going to have to get mud out from in between springs and whatever the hell else is inside of here. And there's a little label. It's like, don't take this apart. And I was like, let me call them and let them see if they're actually serious about that. And and the answer <laughs> of, you know, what do I do with this thing that's covered in mud is uh, just pull the trigger a couple times and it'll clean itself. And it, it did. The, the trigger still works great. Yep. Well, I shot the second day after I did that, and it ran fine. Awesome. Yeah, so that's one of the great things about the roller technology, too, is this kind of the, the, that roller will kind of flush out anything that gets caught in the engagement surfaces. And then where uh, the channeling in our housing uh, is laid out, too, just kind of exits the bottom of the housing. So uh, harsh, dusty environments, uh, extreme mud, um, stuff like that, too. If you guys do get... Uh, really dirty in there. Uh, you can use a light solvent, some compressed air, but most of the time it just dry fire five or six times. So they'll kind of just flush everything out and you'll be good to go. Yeah. We, we actually bought lab grade Arizona dust in the early time and uh, contaminated our triggers on purpose with it, opened them up, packed them in there, and uh, it truly, it just cleans them out over a couple of shots. So we, we actually bought lab grade Arizona dust to, to run through that stuff uh, many years ago now, but yeah. So what's the difference between lab grade dust and just regular dust? <laughs> <laughs> how much how much they charge for it, I think, but <laughs> yeah. So we talked about so we talked about that a little bit and how it self cleans, but what else makes trigger tech triggers better than the competitors? And can you explain the frictionless release technology? Hey, go for it, Mark. <laughs> you're, you're the salesman. You got to earn your keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The frictionless release technology is our roller system, so um, that's what uh, that's kind of referring to. We got a couple other things we put inside the trigger. Um, we have a ticker, which is our ticker technology. Um, it has to do with our robo travel. Um, we also have our clicker, which is our um, adjustment uh, feature, which is unique. Uh, having that Axel D-net um, in there as well. Uh, it's adjusting your, your trigger pull weight is easy. Uh, you do it from the outside of your firearm. Um, each clip's about an ounce of pull weight, um, so you can get an audible click. It's tactile; you can feel it. Um, so it's very, it's very, um, I guess, direct when you're when you're making your adjustments, and super easy. So just the the easy adjustability uh, with that, the zero creep, um, not being uh, susceptible to dust and contaminants like other triggers as well. Um, definitely our our top three features, um, I would say, on trigger. Um, yeah. Did you guys happen to bring one of these triggers with you? No, anyone have one close by? I like outside of a outside of a chassis. Yeah, because I'm looking. I want to see like because triggers. Did I bring any triggers back in that bag? Because I'm, yeah. I'm looking on the website right now, and I mean, this feature where it kind of just like kicks out any contaminants that get in it or anything like that. I was trying. I mean, just from the website, I really can't see. Like anything different, I want. I don't know if you guys can point to it. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely looking at the wrong. Oh, there we go. Well, there it is. I have a trigger in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to see one here? So, um, so your question was, you look on the website there. Yeah, I was looking at gas gun triggers, of course, but oh, uh, I got a gas one too. And so this, so nothing, so all this mud, anything that gets in there is going to be flushed out after a few shots. How, how is that? work out um i don't have an open one but basically if you can imagine the two the two services here like the trigger and the sear so the uh, a sliding friction trigger this is here so anything gets caught in a regular trigger between these two, it, it just binds up it's not going to go anywhere uh, with ours we got a little roller which would be right in here so there's kind of a roller here so basically our system actually just ca cams out what so kind of breaks differently than the sliding one um so anything that's caught in here this roller is going to push, keep spinning and, and pushing stuff out in the on the surfaces. And there's two um, channels in our housing right below it that things can exit. Um, okay, that's a yeah. clear, clear uh, trigger housing to show you. But I'm having on me, but um, it's kind of no, basic. But, no, but that make yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So that really the key is kind of that roller in 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 the middle there. Right. Yep. That free floating roller is uh, okay. The key. Yeah, because man, we get I, I see some some of our rental guns are AR-15 stuff and I don't even want to, I don't even, sometimes I, I, we take the upper lower part. I look in there. I'm like, well, I'm not taking that out. 
close it back up and let it run. But man, you can, the amount of carbon buildup and stuff like that that you just see in the springs and all that, just in there and the housing and everywhere. I'm like, I mean, most of the time they still run, but they will start to get a lot sluggish. And that could be, mm-hmm. obviously, they could be bolt and all, you know, combination of things too. But yeah. uh, probably, that probably the easiest way to describe how, how their system works would be. You know, if you if you have something that you're trying to slide across the floor, which would be you know your trigger on sear rubbing, versus if if you have something with wheels because it has a roller bearing in it, so it's going to roll over the the little bumps or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, also, I got one live one from Chase Curtis. He said, "Canadian <laughs> margaritas rule." What do you say? Canadian margaritas rule. Yeah. Canadian margaritas. I saw that. Wait, it was beer, and you scooped margaritas into it. Is that what you did? Yeah, it's by far the most refreshing drink you'll ever have. But you have a beer <laughs> and, uh, you get a really thick frozen margarita, and you can just gently scoop the frozen margarita on top of the beer. They're called icebergs because it kind of looks like an iceberg underneath, like where the beer is. So, and you're getting like tequila, sugar, and beer all in one shot on a hot day. It's, it's I saw that. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, you, you got to do it in foreign countries though, so no one can judge you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chase. Yeah. Thank you, Chase. <laughs> I have to come to Canada. <laughs> eh? yeah. Oh man, there we go. Um, what else we have here? Um, the difference between the special and the diamond. Uh, what uh, trigger pull weight do you recommend for newer shooters, and how light is too light? Sure. So um, the difference between our three uh, currently our three Ram seven hundred triggers are uh, is the pull weight. So. Um, there's be the special in the, in the the diamond. There's um the main thing is the pull weight. Special goes down to one pound, up to three and a half. Where diamond is four to thirty two ounces. Um, we have a couple extra features on our diamond model. Um, our pro curve lever is only available on diamond. Um, so that's kind of a marriage of the traditional curved and the flat. Um, so it's kind of a flat face feeling curved lever. So you've kind of got some sharper edges on either side. So it really helps you with the. It feels a bit like a wider as well. Um, so it helps you really pull your trigger finger straight back. So if you're pulling the left, you're pulling to the right a bit, you can feel that sharper edge kind of uh, dig into your finger a bit more. So it really helps with the uh, straight pullback. Um, we've also added variable adjustment rate technology on the diamonds. Um, so on our adjustment screw, usually it's one ounce. Um, with the diamonds, um, if it's four to nine or one fifth of an ounce, then as it's 10 to 32, go back to the one ounce. So you can really dial down that low end um on the diamond to really fine tune that for those top shooters that um need that boom here's the thing and i mean what is too light and 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 aside from that every time you see somebody on the internet of course it's internet's gold you (laughs) someone's taking a trigger pull scale to their pistol rifle or it doesn't matter what they're doing and you know people are showing off their trigger weight or whatever and whatever you get a one and a half pound pull in a 2011 or something like that and it's even lighter on prs guns you're always going to have that one individual is going to be like dude you get a, a wind kicks up heavy enough it's going to your gun's going to go off yep or if you drop it hard enough the vibration's going to set the hammer forward or whatever you're always going to have that individual yep. um what what do you usually say to them dudes and how light do you think is too light uh, especially in regards, if I'm a new shooter, I'm be- I'm getting, I, you know, money's not really that up, op- you know, it doesn't, it's not hindering me. I'm just buying all the top shit. All right. Mm. What do you think? What do you, <laughs> you think that you think that four ounce triggers for me? Possibly. Um, <laughs> I, I would say as far as getting down the, the light pull weights, uh, first thing comes down to your experience as a shooter. Um, then I guess your application and then um, it's your confidence. So what we always suggest too is, don't start at the lowest pull weight and just to try it because it'll be fun. Start at the higher pull weights, gradually go down a bit, go down a few clicks, shoot down, and just gradually get down to where you're comfortable with that pull weight. The last thing you want to do is be on the range and be excited on a four ounce trigger, and then you put on your gun, and then you, you know, your glove gently touches it, and then you, know, you have an AD at the range or something like that. So uh, always be cautious, be careful, go down a little bit at a time to uh, to you reach where you're comfortable and where you want to shoot at. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And there's no – for these guys on the internet, there's no way that if I did have my trigger set at four ounce and I'm slamming it down onto some type of rock fucking surface, this ain't going off, right? It's possible. Um, when you get down to this, a few ounces and stuff, uh, if you're going to smash your gun or drop it or do something with uh, – it, it is possible and uh, would be more likely. 
um, at the lower pull weights. Um, so obviously use extreme caution when you're down to three, four ounce uh, with any trigger. Um, anyway, in PRS, you guys run, what is it? Safety on bolt open anyway, when you're running to use, so you can crash it down on something like that. And then, so it's not an issue, right? No, Nobody it's ever not. Puts their safety just, on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Just, yeah. Bolt back. just bolt open, right? Okay. Bolt open. Yeah. You're, you're not closing your bolt to your, your, your point down range on your target. Um, like I said, it's very, very rare. Something like this would happen and all trigger or can be susceptible to it. But, um, yeah. Generally, it's not really a big issue, um, but just use caution, I would say, uh, we're getting down that low. I mean, technically in PRS, like, and this is the way I do it because I'm still scared, like, I will get behind the glass and find the target in my scope before I will close the bolt. Like, it's not like get in position and then slam your bolt shut. I mean, you're, you really are on target before you even close your bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. I so said, I got a comment here. Mark Self says, my triggers have been put through hell. He says he has five diamonds in his rifles. Um, he says, uh, on his range, there's fine sand, and their rifles get blasted with sand all the time. He's never had a failure. So Perfect. To there we go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear they're uh, performing as they should. Um, yeah, going back to what we were talking earlier about being not susceptible to dust and contaminants. I, mean, I was at the finale in 2017, and eight triggers went down in Oklahoma. The first morning, I mean, so not one trigger tech to say, but uh, yes. you know, that's one of the big advantages of with us just being a lot more uh, durable in harsh environments. So I'm glad to hear uh, this five diamonds are <laughs> are working well for them. Nice. I got a question back on the on the different models, um, just because it's something that I think both me and Jen both kind of learned the, the the hard way. Um, compatibility with the different models and different actions as far as the you know trying to put the diamond on a stock 700 trying to put you know can you put the special on something with a bolt release already built into it yeah so um our bolt release is removable and you can simply just unscrew the safety pop the e-clip off and put it back together um so that, that and the trigger work fine it will not void your warranty um triggers that were not originally manufactured with a bolt release you cannot add one to it uh, the reason for that is we actually have a channeling on the side of the housing that the bolt release uh, slides up and down in. So those uh, non-bolt release uh, triggers will not have that. So you can't add that bolt release off. Gotcha. There we go. We're going to do uh, – let's do that uh, giveaway announcement, right? Let's get yeah. that out there because we're about to get into the discount co uh, corner portion of the show, try to save you some money from some great companies who support Shooter's Mindset. I want to hit – this giveaway here. We have a discount code um, for Trigger Tech. Okay, so you just go over to their website. Website is triggertech.com. Discount code is now going to be valid for a week from now to a week from now till pretty much next show. Okay, um, where we're saving 15% off using the code. Was it Mindset 15? No, Shooter's Mindset 15, right? Correct. Shooter's Mindset 15, save you 15% off all, anything over at Trigger Tech. So if you guys are listening to the show, want to upgrade your trigger, like what you hear, um, save you 15% off. Also, there's a giveaway um, where what giveaway we have. We have it set up on a new website here. We usually use another website called Promo Simple. They started the charge. We're like, all right, we're out. Cool. Greg Cannon set it up. <laughs> Greg, what do you have as far as the giveaway goes? All right, so we're trying out a new website. You guys give us some feedback if it, you know, how well it works for you. But basically, um, here within the next two minutes, I'm gonna put a post up on the Facebook page with a link. You click the link and it's gonna tell you to like all of us really awesome people that you guys should probably be liking and following already anyway. Um, once you do that, you just gotta like fill in your, your name, your email, do that little I'm not a robot thing and you'll be entered to win. Um, the contest is open until six or seven o'clock next Tuesday. Um, at which point in time we'll probably go live on the show and choose our winner from there. Yeah, that's uh, any. I think you get to select any trigger on the website, right? Whatever one you prefer, whether you want to go to diamond, whether you want to go to special, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gas gun, gas gun. You want you want to take out the AR-10 or the AR-15? They have triggers for that yeah. also. Girls mm -hmm. love diamonds. You pick any any product you want on the website. Uh, this one product, you pick a hat if you want. Uh, 
There we go. I mean, that would not be the, the best life choice, yeah, but right there, it's true. Could. That is that is a pretty dope hat, though. Yeah. Honestly. It, it is. is. Look, I have one. Yeah. Oh, I would nice. be. I got up to the shot show booth right as he gave away the last hat that was. Um, it didn't have a hole in the back. It was like the fitted hat. Yeah, the cool um, And he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." I was like, "It's okay. I need a ponytail hole, so that hat is perfect." <laughs> <laughs> I have to have somewhere to put my ponytail. See, us girls don't like the fitted hats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good that this uh, draw will happen just before our next major product release. Yes, and I can't wait to hear about it. Me too, <laughs> after these commercials. Yeah. <laughs> after these discounts from our great folks, uh, sponsors who support us, all right? Jen, you usually start us off with those. What do you got? Um, yes, you can get 10% off at Carbon Arms. US on their shotgun shell caddies, um, ratchet belts. I was just telling people about the ratchet belts at the match on Saturday and how awesome they are. Cause I need to put mine on. It's yeah. You've had one for like a year and you haven't put it on. I don't know what's wrong with you. Like to. Anyway. Uh, so they're awesome and you should go check them out and you can use the code TSM 10 to get 10% off. You can also get 10% off at the shooters mindset dot com store with the best code ever which is gen tsm10 don't listen to anyone else's codes ever it's just gen tsm10 um so you can get 10 percent off we've got some great stuff there some gear nation t-shirts um tti base pads that kind of stuff uh, and you can also get 10 percent off at under industries on jerseys and jackets you see my jacket back there um They'll, he'll basically do whatever. I have a sweatshirt. I love it. I wore my sweatshirt the whole match Saturday because it was cold here. Mm -hmm. So um, check them out at Under Industries. Mention the Shooters not shooters Mindset for 10% off. Boom. Cannon, what do you have? First off, I'd like to give a thank or give a shout out to my 19 total page likes right now. We have gone up nine during the first <laughs> half of the show. Um, <laughs> as far as discount codes, what I have is I have you could save 10% off at Overwatch Defense with the code Cannon10. Um, shoot them an email, give them a call. Um, you get an awesome Cerakote job or all sorts of other crazy stuff. Any any sort of guns you need tricked out or even just, just need to buy a new gun, give them a call. There we go. Got a couple of my end here. Folks over at Tactical Shit, uh, shop.tacticalshit.com, TSM10 saves you 10% off uh, website-wide. Also good in their retail store over in St. Peter's, Missouri. So if you're in that area, you can yell it at the cashier, and you'll see 10% off your, your order there. Uh, TerranTacticalInnovations.com, TSM10, good for all parts, okay? Any gunsmithing stuff, you can email me or get a hold of me on social media. I don't think it'll work. But if you're looking for any base pads, Glock parts, anything, 2011 parts, they have that. Uh, and TSM10 is good. UMTactical.com, TSM10 gets you 10% off. They have a lot of holsters now, AR stuff, AR parts, uh, UMTactical.com. And that's it. Anything, Mark, Taylor, anything? On your end, that you know, maybe some sponsors or anything you guys got? Nope. Not, nothing? Nope. But they are, once again, Shooter's Mindset 15, right? That's it. 15% off starting right now at TriggerTech.com. All right. Put something in the notes like, you know, you guys are awesome and, and maybe they'll throw in like a Tootsie Roll or something in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that way they know. Do they have Tootsie Roll? I thought it was from Canada. Is it? Where no? Is it? Or is it Tootsie Roll American? Hold on. Someone hit up the Googles <laughs> and let us know in the comment section. All right. All right. There we go. Uh, what else do you have? Uh, we're good with discounts. If, uh, if you're up in Toronto, we can get you a Canadian margarita. Yes. Much better than <laughs> a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> Uh, tell us about the AR triggers. Are, are they as awesome as the bolt gun triggers? Tell us a bit more about what is this? F L R T W Z Z Z A <laughs> spring technology. <laughs> Jerry, want that one? Yeah. So we we developed a different hammer spring. Um, so uh, with, with a lot of different trigger companies, when you're getting a lighter AR hammer, uh, sometimes you'll find people take force away from a a hammer in order to lighten up the total spring and then you'll you'll find uh, some problems come up like light primer strikes, 308 issues, surplus issues, stuff like that. 
So we've actually gone a different way. We have a full force hammer on everything, including the new product that Mark will be talking about uh, in a little bit. But we've actually developed, instead of a round spring, we have a flat wire spring, so we can pack a lot more force into that same hammer spring, which allows us to operate at about 60% of our total hammer force, um, which stops it from fatiguing. You end up with a full hammer force um, for the lifetime of the product. Uh, so it's, it's worked out very well for us. Oh, there we go. Now I've had some experience with, especially I know I know you guys you know follow the the PCC game and all that stuff with the the action pistol sports and three gun and all that stuff. I in the beginning when this become be, got really hot, people were just throwing their AR-15 triggers in these PCC rifles and experiencing some issues. All right, I've experienced two or three shots going off, like you know shooting on reset, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is a trigger tech, you know, AR-15 style trigger good to go in those PCC rifles? Yeah, yeah. Any of our models is good with PCC. We do extensive testing with PCC. Um, our hammer sits up a little bit higher, so we don't have any of those resetting problems. Um, it, it is a tougher environment for a trigger to operate in, but uh, we're we're good across the board on those things. Boom. So you can, if you want a trigger for the PCC, look no further. The folks over at Trigger Techs gotcha. Yeah, there was there was a bunch of. You know that some guys had the hammer was too short. Some I don't the the blowback operation was causing the the, the, the hammer to fall. It was it was weird, but I think most companies kind of got hip to it, obviously, and it took, fixed it took some time. Quickly. Yeah, yeah, fairly quickly. Um, what else do we got? Cannon, you got number six, or you got anything live lined up? Uh, nothing live right now. Um, yeah, we're going. Um, so Trigger Tech is a huge supporter of PRS matches. Um, what do you like to see competitors do to show gratitude for sponsoring matches and providing prizes for the prize table? So I know every time um, I'm near a prize table, you know, I'm way back there at the back of the line and all these guys are walking out and everyone <laughs> has a Trigger Tech box in their hand for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> and we're yeah, all drooling cool. as they're yeah. walking by. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, we're more than happy to support all these matches and stuff. I mean, uh, most of the guys who run these matches are, you know, our customers as well, too. Um, so um, most of them are great. I mean, most of the shoes are awesome. Uh, a lot of people just drop us a line saying, hey, you know, I won a prize table. You know, thanks so much or whatever. Uh, that's that's more than enough thanks for, for us. Uh, so we're happy to support the industry um, in that way, too. So and we'll continue to do so. Yeah. The biggest thanks is enjoying the product. Yeah. It is All very right, enjoyable. All right, so you guys obviously donated a lot of stuff to these matches. Now, we had Frank Galley on the show uh, last week, and a lot of this th this kind of talk has came up with um, shooters grabbing prize table stuff, and before, you know, by the end of the day, the stuff's on either a Facebook group for sale on some forum or somewhere on eBay or whatever. Um, and as, as apparently, you know, the companies who donate that stuff get kind of ticked off at that type of action. Now, where are you guys feel? I don't know if you, I'm probably you guys aren't speaking for Trigger Tech as a company, but in your personal opinions, what do you think about that type of practice? Being support, you know, people just, all right, you donated 200 triggers. Now you got 100 of them for sale at a discounted rate for people to get fast dough. Yeah, you know, I guess it's not not good. I guess uh, we haven't really run into a problem like that. Um, okay. um, as far as because nobody wants to sell their trigger techs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure things things you know do end up on on forums and stuff like that, and uh, you know, there's not much you can do about stuff like that. But um, we, I, I think I find mostly with the PRS industry, especially, um, it, it's just such a great community. And I've seen people take things off the prize table and bring it to a new shooter and say, hey, you know, here's a trigger, here's this part and stuff. And uh, I think especially a lot of top shooters are, are just really good like that. If they don't need stuff, then I think they're more than happy to, to find a new shooter there and, and help them out. So I think that's one of the great things I've personally observed uh, in, in the shooting community. So I just hope that uh, that keeps spreading. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that because, you know, um, Jen claims to be new to PRS, but I right. – her M for her second gap grind and getting into it, just the overwhelming amount of support. You know, we had a Facebook group for amateurs and their pros only. Um, and everyone's just like, Hey, anybody need this? Anybody need that? I mean, there's people giving away all sorts of stuff, just kind of literally just to help those of us that were 
going from nothing to wanting to do this. So it really is an, an amazing community. And, you know, not the, you know, my best friends in the world came from USPSA and three gun shooting, but like the community as a whole in the long range is, is just awesome. Is it, so you, you guys pick up a different feel between the two, the games, as far as that goes. I mean, it's not that one's more generous than the other. I, I mean, I guess one really is. Um, I've never personally seen, I've heard that it happens. I've never personally seen at three gun matches, people walk off the prize table and hand it to someone else. Every single PRS match I've ever been at, every one, mm -hmm. someone has walked off and handed their prize to someone else or their name is called and they walk up to the match director and they go, whoa, 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 wait, can you find the person that was 138th and call them up to walk my turn? And they let them go pick what they want off the prize table. Like every single match I've seen multiple people do it at PRS. I have not seen that on the pistol side of things, neither. Now, I mean, maybe the, I'm sure people have done it before. I've heard of people doing it. But like when I stuck around for that table, I do not. Maybe I, it, I might have just missed it, but I have not seen it happen very often like that. So especially when you're when you're noticing three, four people doing it every match, mm -hmm. that kind of you know it's noticeable. They're um, given to um, they're given to juniors. There's a lot of that where they'll call a junior up to go walk for them. Uh, a lot of helping the females out. A lot of just trying to find like the last person. Like okay, well this person was last. You know, I want them to come walk. And I think people recognize that in order to grow the sport, I mean, it's great as somebody that's like a top 10 finisher to get prizes. That's great. And they totally deserve it. I'm not one of these that's like everybody deserves a trophy. I totally think they deserve it. But it's also it grows the sport whenever they turn around and give it to someone that, honest to God, doesn't have a complete rifle to be able to do it, you know, and and they're shooting with truly subpar stuff. And so they're giving them the things that they need to be able to keep going in the sport and give back to other people that way. So, yeah, it's a good group. I'm sure people do. it. I've seen stuff go to juniors and stuff like that, but I just, not something that I've picked up on noticing, at least on the pistol side of things. So there we go. Well, you have um, to go to custom rem 700 and uh, come over the bolt side. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there are. Uh, what else we have here? Um, you guys are a supporter of the law enforcement military. Are all uh, military and Leos eligible for the LEAF program? And tell us about that program. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a LEAF uh, form on our website in the About section. Um, so you can just fill out uh, your information there, send some sort of verification, uh, whether you ID, you work email, or some other paperwork or something. Um, but that usually within 24 hours, they fly back. Uh, we give you access to our dealer site at 15% off for life. Um, so we also extend it also to uh, some industry people. If we work for uh, industry companies as well, uh, we extend for that too. So uh, definitely proud to uh, support our, our troops and our law enforcement and stuff. So um, I don't know why we had that program running. And uh, if you guys are one of them that qualify, by all means, fill the form and uh, you know get some discounts on triggers. What it what, I, I, did I miss? What the discount was, or does that vary? Was it 10, 15 percent, five percent, fifteen percent off? Fifteen percent. Our dealer's like yeah. Boom. That's awesome. Yeah, I agreed. What do you got, Jen? Anything? So, how adjustable are the triggers? If I looked correctly on the website, the CLKR technology lets the user adjust the pull weight, and the TKR technology allows adjustment to the over travel and reset. So how easy is all that to do? So me, who is not very technical and has to go garage at my friend's house to get things fixed, how easy is it for someone like me to adjust that trigger to where I want it? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so we, we, we do a pull weight adjustment. We, that's the only adjustment that we offer on our uh, trigger. So we don't actually offer an over travel adjustment. The ticker technology that we have is a, uh, it, it's an extra piece that bridges our trigger uh, to our sear. So there's another piece uh, in between the two of them. It's kind of hard to explain without, without showing a diagram, but that minimizes over travel. So there's very, very little over travel built into the trigger. Um, but because we don't have traditional sear engagement, uh, we don't offer sear uh, engagement adjustment. We simply offer a pull weight adjustment. Um, 
and and that just kind of keeps it simpler, one less thing to fail, um, and and you know we, we we build such a fine trigger to begin with that we we haven't felt a lot of professional uh, opinions that we've gotten back haven't haven't required the adjustment to the over travel there, so we didn't end up including that uh, with the diamond. Simple yeah, is good for simple people like me. So yeah, yeah, it's it's adjustable even when it's installed in your stalker chassis. So it's it's something that you can change the weight of very very easily. Um, the clicker technology, it's a dent system in there, so it will never back out. So once you set your once you set your your, your pull weight, you're you're locked in there for good. And uh, yeah, wonderful. Is it, an, is it an Allen wrench that adjusts it? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not one of those dudes that like to do all the crazy adjustment and mess with this screw back this one off i just like to drop it in there if it feels good then i just run it like that there's a lot of people who a lot of and there's nothing wrong with it but they're always tinkering with something some type of part and not necessarily the trigger it's just always something they're always changing something and for some there's people that i know that it blows sometimes it blows my mind i was like the gun's running perfect and then they're, they're going they're changing the hammer they're going to some lightweight stuff they're oh yeah just, just now the trigger's a pound and a half. It was two pounds yesterday. It was working fine. I don't. I just. I don't know. I just. We were just talking at our pistol match on Wednesday night last week that Glocks are reliable until you go adjusting everything. Because <laughs> somebody had a gun go down, and we were like, "Yeah, yeah. what did you do to it?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's especially with Glocks. I mean, and I've I've learned this the hard way. I've kind of. Not necessarily. I mean, actually, I did do some. I think I had a Zeb trigger or whatever. I was, you know, what one of the over travels, one of the screws backed out, and probably my fault for not lock tightening it. But I never really touched it. I just threw it in there, started running it, running it, running it, running it, running. It. Eventually, it was boom, 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 boom. I was like, oh, okay. Well, there's a bunch of penalties. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. I mean, but it's not. It's not functioning properly when you get three round bursts. Um, but that's happened with my PCC rifles. That's happened with my Glocks. And then eventually I sent it to uh, DK Custom Triggers. He's like, dude, what do you got in this thing? And I had a bunch <laughs> of fucking four-pound striker springs with, you know, all types of mixed breed parts. And it was, he's like, uh, yeah, why don't you put some of the stock shit back? And then we'll, like, maybe cut a coil off here or there. And we'll, I think it'll run way more reliable. And that's, and then once he did that, I never, ever touched anything. That goes the same 2011s. There's just one dude. I mean, I don't get it. Every time he's telling me to feel his trigger, he's changed it. Every time I see him. Every time. I'm like, dude, it was fucking two pounds yesterday. What is a half a, how is a half a pound adjustment going to really help your performance other than mess with the reliability of the gun? So, weird. But there's people like that. Uh, people want to try to get every ounce out of their gear, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just not one of those folks. Huh. So, Interesting. Uh, if anybody, if anybody can break a trigger, I can. I've seen it. Yeah, I will I buy a bunch of gear and shit. Like keep buying, and you know, I'll buy gear, buy gear, buy gear, buy gear because hey, I just like to do that. Who doesn't? But I really don't tend to play with the triggers and springs anymore. I learned my that Glock before. trigger. I've what all have I broken on it? Oh god, springs and I broke the whole um you trigger broke the whole rod thing in half. Yeah. I, I don't know how you break a trigger pin in the Glock, but you, you broke the trigger pin, you broke the spring inside of the trigger safety, you broke... Sure. I shoot it a lot. What can I say? Yeah. You I shot a whole match with the uh, trigger pin broken. <laughs> in half. In two pieces. Yeah, because you found it in your, in your gun rug. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I went to go put the gun back at the end of the match, and I was like, oh, there's half of a pin in here. That can't be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mostly it's weird because, you know, and then what did you have? A fiber? Your fiber optic fell out on the last day. It but that, did. that's it common. That's not a big deal. Uh, that's pretty common. I um, went up, and I was looking for red, and I was like, oh, there's, there's no red there. Okay, well, I'll just shoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have had quite a few problems with that Glock, which is... That clock has like fifty thousand miles on it, though. <laughs> yeah, that that thing is, is definitely worn in. I, that's that's awesome, though. Those are the Glocks I want, though. Yeah, and I think it definitely uh, has a lot of rounds through it. Yeah. At the end of last year, we took a we went on uh, NDZ Performance. I got a whole bunch of parts replaced. It was it was when the uh, pin broke and put new springs and 
pins and all that stuff because they got the stuff up there for so so affordable. And uh, it's ran good since besides for the fiber. But that's no biggie. Yeah. Just need to throw more in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, any upcoming matches? Will you guys be at MPA? Um, and are you looking to be top international shooter again? Assuming that's Mark, Mark chickened <laughs> out. I thought he was going to shoot MPA, and he said he's not what? chicken. What? But he was. He was top international shooter at Altus. That's right. I was. Yeah. No one, uh, no one beat me on that part. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, I was. I was pl hoping to be at MPA in a couple weeks, but uh, just quite a bit of work travel and uh, work stuff here, so. Uh, had to pull out, but uh, I believe uh, Phil Cash is giving away the Trigger Tech spot to somebody. So um, they put something on social media soon about that. So there could be a free spot available if it's not taken already. Um, but yeah, we should be get some more matches uh, sometime in the summer. Uh, we'll definitely be at Gap Grind again for sure. I think more of our Trigger Tech team will be there this year. Um, probably hopefully a couple more uh, throughout the year as well. So um, if you, we are there, um please come say hi maybe it won't rain maybe it won't rain as much as it did at altus yeah. <laughs> i finished right before it as soon as it started started oh man <laughs> so i uh, was covering with like raining cats and dogs and people were still shooting now so it's like, oh, it so. literally <laughs> so i got on the bus stage which you know the bus you're underneath the cover so you kind of don't mm -hmm. realize i got in the bus and it started pouring while i was in the middle of that stage like i'm shooting and I, all of a sudden i was like oh it's kind of hard to see wow okay i think that's the target mm -hmm. and i finished and i was like oh now i have to get out of the bus and so i literally like got out of the bus and ran you know how far it is from the bus up to that um where yeah. they had us zero yeah i ran up there because i didn't want my gun to get yeah. completely drenched again and so i like took off running but I, that was I a fun a, match i had a new rifle there so i was definitely not getting any mud or dirt or water on it <laughs> <laughs> hey after lrsc i bought my rifle has a raincoat now yeah, I need so it. I try to keep it dry for real. Yeah, I definitely need one of those for this PRS, the Precision Rain series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, do you shoot PRS matches? I've not shot one yet. Um, we'll be shooting one shortly this year. Um, looking forward to it very much. Uh, hearing, hearing from Mark has got me quite jealous. So uh, yeah. I should be out there. Uh, should, should be out there a couple times this year. Have some competition for the top international shooter soon. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough, uh, <laughs> tough run Man, for that one. He might have to like <laughs> knock his uh, knees out or something. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you been practicing at all? Yeah, no, yeah. We're, we're, we're too polite. We'll we'll get the same score on purpose, not so we don't upset each other. <laughs> nah, oh we'll, see, we'll see about gosh. that. We'll see about that. Yeah. yeah. Wait, are y'all that polite? <laughs> no. <a> Canadian thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like. No. No. What are the gun laws like in Canada? A uh, lot stricter than uh, down there. <laughs> um, they're a little bit different. Uh, obviously, no, no automatics, no suppressors, uh, no really short barrel lengths. Um, centerfire rifles are restricted to five rounds. Magazines, pistols, ten, ten rounds. Um, it's kind of That's so fun. Too. There's restricted and non-restricted, so restricted are your ARs, your pistols. There's a bit more laws of transportation and stuff and background checks before you get those. Uh, Non-restricted are your hunting rifles and stuff. They're, they're pretty relaxed on that. You can kind of buy and sell and trade with the people and stuff. There's no transfer process or registration on those ones. So um, Now, five-round capacity no, for no, any rifle? For any, any center fire rifle. Like it's a semi-automatic. Semi-automatic. Semi-auto, semi 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 but not both. No, there's no, yeah, there's, there's no mag on bolt, bolt actions. Okay, I was about to say, I knew there was a PRS match. I don't know if it was PRS or, or what division, you know, but it was a long-range match that a bunch of the guys went up to last year. A lot of people that I know went up and shot in Canada, so I was like, how did y'all do that if there was only five rounds? Yeah, so yeah, only semi-automatic. Uh, yeah, no suppressors up here, so uh, if you guys are coming up to the match this year, don't bring your suppressors. <laughs> What about uh, bringing your guns uh, from Canada into the States? I'm sorry? Is, is there anything crazy you guys got to do to bring your guns from Canada down here to shoot a match? 
Nope. You just have to get a, a form six with the ATF. Uh, it takes about a month to get. You just put down a serial number and have a match invitation or something like that, and then uh, they just mail you back a form six, which is good for a year, and you can use that to come back and forth as much as you please. That's um, probably the easiest thing the ATF does. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. It's still, it's still a hassle though to travel with them, but um, it's, it's not yeah. that bad. I was talking to a dude. He was from, uh, I believe he was from Toronto. He was he was visiting down here. He was in the range. He, he knew what he was doing. Um, shot a lot of different firearms. So I just happened to ask him. I think so for the AR-15 or I think mean, it was a semi-automatic center fire style rifles. To get those, you almost have to go through like a mental kind of health check. What like they interview your spouse or something weird like that? Is All that right. yeah All right? right. They won't do that to buy them. When you get your restricted firearms license, then they'll call your spouse. Uh, if your spouse says no for any reason at all, you're not getting that restricted license. Oh, that's <laughs> so, oh that is so not cool. Uh, when you're applying for your license, you're really on good terms with your wife uh, or husband. Uh, oh, my so, gosh. Yeah, that's that horrible. Check, yeah, for restricted are. Um, but then once you have that, buy, they'll still do a background check. Um, when you buy ones as well. Um, cool thing about people don't know about Canadians and firearm owners is that there's actually a background check done on us, us every single day. So a federal background check is done. Uh, if you get any troubles, you get in a bar fight or something, the RCP is coming that day and they're taking their gun, all your guns. So um, <laughs> we are yeah. like law abiding gun owners up here, that's for sure. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Yeah, yeah the, the, immediately I know they do it for probably other reasons. Um, but Amelia, you know how many people, how many guys won't buy those guns? If that was the case, you had to call the wife up. Yep, you got a such and such mark is here buying uh, two AR-15s. But she's gonna be like, nope, Wait, he can't. He can't they, spend that money. Yeah. Wait, do they tell her how much? No, no, it's oh, only if you're getting your license, they'll call your spouse. So just to get yeah. the license, when you buy individual purchases, okay. they will call because. No, that'd be very bad. I wouldn't have any. Yeah, if my husband, <laughs> if my husband knew how much I spent on guns, he'd divorce me. Yeah, I'm okay. always like, oh, honey, it's on sale. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, on sale. Or you could be like, you know, they're my sponsors, right? They sent. Yeah, me I'm stuff. like, a box yeah. comes, and I'm like, oh, yeah, so and so just sent that to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, your your biggest fear is that one day you'll die, and your wife will sell your guns for what you told her you paid for them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm like, if something happens to me, someone has to come in and do an intervention. And yeah, because there you go. Gotcha, uh, man. Well, lastly, here, will you guys be at NRA show if you have a booth number? Yeah. Yeah. We're at NRA. Uh, I don't remember my booth. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Um, you, both of you guys will be there, or is it just one yeah. of you? Yeah. No, two of us will be there. Yeah, I dig an RA show. I'm not sure if I'm going still. I'm long last minute on that. I know John and Greg are not going. I um, want to. Yeah. I did SHOT Show. That drained the bank. Between SHOT Show and Kids in College, that's it. Oof. Yeah, Indiana. I um, believe it's at the end of mid-April, end of April. End of April, is, yeah. Is uh, an RA sure. show. Yeah, if I did NRA, I'd have to eliminate one of my matches. So I was like, no, I already did shot show. I'll go shoot matches. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. The, the 20, it's the 26th or 28th. So it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can't find our booth number, but we're on the on the list. So. Yeah, just check the list. If you guys are attending, you guys would know. Um, yeah. Plenty of plan fil pamphlets and stuff when you walk into the convention center where they'll have all the vendors at. And the good thing about NRA show that you can purchase – uh, gear and triggers and all that stuff at the show. It's not like SHOT Show in any form. Yep. I know majority of the viewers already know this, and I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but yes, yeah, so you can just go ahead if you prefer to and wait a month and just hell, just go up to these guys, talk to them in person, buy some triggers direct, you can do that. Yeah, you Although can they wouldn't get to use the awesome Shooter's Mindset discount code if they did <laughs> right. that. I'm right. just saying. And that is shooter be as cool. 15. Yeah. How many triggers do y'all sell? Like at NRA show, do y'all sell a lot? We don't usually, because since we're from Canada, we usually don't bring down stock to sell just because if we don't sell it all, then it's a hassle to bring it back. What do we do with it and stuff? Um, so, generally, so, hey, if you want, I'll grab whatever y'all have left over. 
Perfect. <laughs> and I'll hold on to it for you. We'll apply the shooter's mindset 15 promo code to it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So usually we, we always do like an NRA special usually, but usually it's just a promo code to our website for those three days of the show that's active. Um, so there we uh, go. that'll be available too. Boom. I think cool. we're good. Mark Self says. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. The new product release. Yeah. I was no, about to say. We'll, we'll save it for another time. Fine. Drop no, no. it. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Okay. So April 1st, it's been a, a, a long time waiting for it. Uh, April 1st, we're releasing our AR Diamond. Um, so we're pretty excited about this. Um, it's a pound and a half to four pounds adjustable. Um, so it'll be the same red housing like our Rem Diamonds. Um, a lot of our pro shooters are using it, absolutely loving it. Um, so we're super excited for that. So uh, our dealers are stocking up right now this month. So they're placing all their orders. Uh, make sure they have stock of time for April 1st. And then uh, April 1st, we'll go live on our website too. Uh, you guys start ordering that trigger. Um, we're also having our own AR safety coming out too. Um, that won't be out until a little bit later. Um, cool thing with our, our safety um, is that once you install it, you don't have to take the grip out to change, to take the safety out. So you can change the grip stays in now. Uh, we have our own D dent too, which is super slick, some proprietary uh, technology on that as well. But uh, changing your triggers, taking your safety out, take your grip off, um, which is great. So the AMB, it's a 45 and 90 um, short, long lever, interchangeable, cap on one side too. It'll be black and stainless. So uh, those are coming out next probably a month or two. And then uh, the Air Diamond, April 1st. Awesome. Not an April Fool's joke. Awesome. Sorry? It's not an April Fool's joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the AR Diamond. And I it, really convenient on the AR safety. You know, mm -hmm. that that's that's super convenient. You're like, oh well you think it's you know it's just a quick swap. Oh damn, now the safety gotta come out. And it's yeah. like, all right. If I can just get one where I don't have that inconvenience of having to take out other things just to change out one thing. That helps that makes sense. Product, product testing on the range too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm about to say, like the the hardest part of putting a trigger tech trigger in an AR because they they are the the one piece drop in, and I'd never put a drop in trigger in anything before, and I was putting it in my my brother's gun, and I was like, oh, it's gonna be so cool. I was like, oh, I gotta pull the safety out. Yeah, but, you know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Do you, do you have a price point on that AR diamond yet? Uh, two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Yeah. And that is going to be maybe coming out during. Oh no, we won't have the. No, we still won't have our shooters mindset discount then. Dang. Yeah, no. It's funny. It was like Mark Self's in the in the chat here. He says, "When will we see the diamond AR-15 trigger?" And we just hit it like as soon as his question came in. <laughs> uh, how low? How low will be? Will we? Will you be able to set it? The pound weight, I believe. What pound he's talking about here, pound and a half. I heard. Yep. Down and half. Any live on your end? Any Greg over there? Anything? No live here. I think we're good to wrap this one up. What do you think? Good, everybody. So. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of start this one. Oh no, I won't. Just going to throw out Cannon's a uh, new professional shooter page. Uh, let's get him some likes over there. Try to get him a hundred likes. He just threw it up. I think he's got probably got up to 20 now i hope 21 21 21 likes you want to get uh canon some uh some likes on his facebook so go over uh, type in greg cannon or you can canon tsm 10 in a facebook chat also you can follow canon jennifer TSM. canon tsm geez yeah. tsm 10s everywhere yeah Can't get over it let's, let's see uh, how many likes jennifer has yeah J J you can always follow jennifer seymour's professional shooter athletes page um, on, uh, she has a uh, plenty of likes, I think probably upward to 5,000, <laughs> I think. So I don't but, even know, but it, yeah, it's somewhere up there. It's like high fours, 5,000, somewhere in there. Uh, but if you haven't liked her Facebook, social media, Instagram, Snapchat, it, um, uh, whatever that is, uh, go, go like everybody's page. All right. Uh, lastly, shout outs, Jen, what do you have? Uh, okay. First I have to shout out to my awesome pants that I just got in the mail today from American Rifle Series. Check them <laughs> out. I know everybody wants a pair. Awesome. Nice. You're jealous. You're jealous, aren't you, Mark? You're going to order a pair right now, aren't you? Definitely. Absolutely. Isn't that awesome? Can you all see it? If, no, if I order myself a pair, will they be here in time for MPA? 
Fundamentals <laughs> are a crutch for the talentless. There you go. Okay. I had to show my pants off because I was so excited when I got them. And my husband looked at me like I had three heads, but it's okay. Um, now, back to regular shout outs. Macmillan stocks. I am still super stoked and waiting for that to get finished up. Can't wait. Night Force Optics. Warren scope mounts and bipods. There's an awesome Warren bipod on that right there that I like. So check it out. Under Industries for awesome jerseys and jackets and hoodies. Shooters of Augusta and Sharp Shooters of Augusta, our local shooting range in my heart here for shooting in Augusta, Georgia. And I'll shout out We Bad, who's making me a really awesome bag that says Shooters Mindset, but it's not here yet, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think I got one coming. I'm looking forward to that. You do. Greg, what do you got? I have shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta. I was at sharpshooters right before I was here getting ready for my match this weekend. Um, Overwatch Defense for an awesome Cerakote job. PDC Custom for this really awesome lime green chassis that you guys have been seeing all show. You know, a nice place to put your trigger tech trigger. I need my um, sunglasses. Yeah, you need you need those for this thing. Um and NDZ performance um, for all sorts of stuff to trick out your Glock, your Shield, your LCP2, whatever. They got all sorts of cool, cool parts there at great prices. There we go. Mark, anything, any shout outs? What do you got? No, no uh, sh shout outs to all of, the, uh, all of our customers and people that support us. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So we just want to say thank you to everyone that uh, supports Trigger Tech and uh, we'll keep striving to make uh, top products for you guys. Taylor, what do you got? Shout out to uh, the Shooter's Mindset. Thanks for having us on here, guys. Yeah, we, ap we appreciate <laughs> you guys coming on, speaking about triggers. Uh, obviously, I'm way more familiar now. That tech, that roll pin technology deal, that sounds pretty awesome. I don't, I don't, I didn't know about any of that. I was like, that's why I was like, how does all this mud and everything fall out? What are you guys throwing some gimmicky shit out there? But now that <laughs> no, makes <I'm> sense, <laughs> and it, it makes sense now. You know, so there we go. If you're, you know, one of those people who run your stuff into the ground, mud, sand, uh, whether it's lab grade, natural grade, <laughs> <laughs> you want to look into that. Um, what else I have on my end? If you're watching on the YouTube side of things, uh, you want to hit the yellow subscribe button right underneath the video. Every Tuesday, 9 Eastern, we got a new episode featuring another great guest. Uh, folks over at Terran Tactical Innovations, always appreciate their support. Great gear, great guns. Uh, big fans of them. What do we have? The email. If you want to email me, mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Definitely thanks to uh, Taylor, Mark, Jen, Greg for helping with the show and their support here. And lastly, what do we got? I don't know. Don't forget through. to enter the giveaway. Oh, yeah, yeah the giveaway. Yeah, lastly, we'll do that and we'll wrap it up with that. Uh, Giveaway is the link is posted on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. We'll try to share those out throughout the week. So if you're following me, maybe on my personal Facebook, I'll share it there. Instagram, we'll try to get it up there. Um, but you can currently right now, if you're listening to this live, you can find that link on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. Enter to win your choice of Trigger Tech gear. If you want a hat, if you want a diamond trigger, um, whatever, whatever they got over there, you can select one. What I would suggest you do is get the diamond trigger and then use the discount code to get yourself a sweet hat from them. Makes sense. <laughs> or yeah. if you get the diamond trigger and want the hat, I will trade you. I will order the hat to your house. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That yeah, that's a good good deal, Cannon. I'm a nice guy. Uh, like that. Yeah. Episode that'll do it for episode 256. Other shooters' minds. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight, and we're out of here.